Hello, I'm Mix Miles and Mile Man, and welcome to my channel. What an absolutely dreadful day. They said we'd be getting hit again, and we're getting hit again with um, gale force winds and, um, and rain again. So it's absolutely dreadful outside. I've been down to Brighton, so I pick up some bits and pieces. <sighs> and I thought I'll come down and do a bit of um, recording today. There's nothing else to do. I can't work out in the garden. It's absolutely saturated. So you're getting a bit of noise off of the shed roof because it is absolutely lashing down and about 50 to 60 mile an hour wind. So that's what it is. So forgive me for the noise. On the bench today, we've got a follow up video to my Atco Baumol 17SE, the one I picked up um, just the other week. And um, today I'd like to try and get it running if I can. It is in an absolute dreadful state. It wants a damn good clean, sorting out. Um, the last video you would have seen, I put some carburetor cleaner down the down the carburetor throat and did manage to get just, just a sort of run over, but it was only ever run on carburetor spray. It wouldn't run on anything else at all. So um, I want to check to see if there's any fuel still in the tank, see if it has um, leaked out or not have it. If it's holding, that's good. And then a quick tide off clean up. Carburetor clean is definitely needed. Um, and then we'll go from there and try and get this little, little tiny um, 17 inch to run. If it does, we'll be quids in. Uh, not this year, it'll be next year now. Um, but hopefully um, this will be sort of a, a bumper start to the year because these guys for quite good money. So this has got the, the Scarifier on it as well. I don't know what year it is off the top of my head. It looks to be 2003. So there you go. And I have just picked up two, three more miles, a couple of haters, uh, a Mazport, um, which I did in a grass box for. If anyone's got a Mazport grass box. And I picked this up. Uh, I quite like these. Uh, this is the McCulloch. Um, uh, Eco Light 6028. That's the longer one out of two. We do do we do two. One's a short one, one's a long one. And it's got the, the oscillating handle and what have it. Just, just for a cheap home user grade bit of kit, they're pretty good. I quite like those. And they tend to run pretty well, so it might be no good. We'll have to see how we get on. But today will be the Atco Bow Moral um, 17 SE. I have had a battery on charge overnight and uh, just put it on charge now. So by the time the video's done, we will also try out the electric start as well, see if that works. And if it does, we've been, uh, we could possibly have bought an absolute beauty here. The only thing that concerns me is on the front of the mower, um, he's got the scarifier on, and he's also got the grass comb on. It's not really recommended to scarify with the Atco Bound Morals with the front comb on because the scarifier goes lower than the, uh, goes lower than the comb. So that means the comb digs into the ground. So generally, I would recommend to remove the comb if you're using a scarifying unit. So. Let's get on with this then, see what we can't do. Uh, if this is your first time in watching Mixed Mud and Man, hit the old subscribe button, not back the old bell. Send notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload another video. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty. And let's have a little go at this Atco Balmoral 17 SE. Try and get it to run and make it look just a little bit more tidier. Right, so there it be. What well, first of all, it's my WD-40 spray. I've got, I've got a, a, a pressurised doodad. Just gonna just cover the whole machine in WD-40. Um, it just gets rid of all the, the dust on here. Uh, just helps just to try and keep the dust down. And then I can blow it all off with an air compressor. And uh, it tends just to shine a bit better as well. So it's just more for, for appearances, but it does just do quite a good job in just keeping down the dust. I'll give it a quick wipe off, quick WD-40. And um, then we can go from there. I need to fire my compressor up in a minute. That's, that's probably empty. But just by wiping it alone. Now, if someone would have done this when they went to sell it, just put WD-40, straight away, the appearance of the machine looks 10 times better. And you can squeeze another sort of 20, 30 quid out of it just by just making it look a bit more presentable. So make you put this on the marketplace uh, for sale and just, it was as is, did nothing to it, don't do nothing to it, not interested in it and go from there. But just by giving it a quick little happy birthday, just makes it pop, which is good. So I'm gonna get the air compressor out. I'm just gonna compress all the bits and pieces off. This cowling will have to come off eventually because there's all sorts of grass down behind you. I'm gonna get all that out. Uh, but the first thing we need to do is make sure the machine actually runs 
before I do absolutely anything at all. Because uh, there's no point in doing the cosmetic side of it if the machine itself is a non-runner, and it could very well be. So let's um, have Carby off, and then we'll go from there, shall us? Right, let's get started. I want a 3 8 I think. Probably be a 3 8 on there, no doubt. 3 8 or 7 16 one or other. Yeah, 3 8 So 3 8 spanner. Crack that nut there. There's one around here as well to do. There's only fuel in there first, Mick. I did put fuel in there, yes, see. Can't see. Cable in the way. Can't see. I put some fuel in there yesterday, and I want to see if it's drained out or not. LED light. <laughs> no, bone dry. And I'm sure I put some fuel in there Yes, see, I did. So that means it's actually letting bind the seat. So that's not very good. But we do do that. So I'm just going to remove the fuel hose off the back. There's a little bit of just excessive fuel there. Just so I can get to this little tiny nut just here. Loosen that one off. Now I've got a little tiny nut on the back of these as well, so you can you can just hold this one up and then just spin the back of it. Yeah, can you hear that rain? Can you hear that? I'll take a little tiny nut and bolt off of there. But some of them have got a torx bit on there as well, some of them. Now we'll be looking if this doesn't run as well as I would like to change this over for a whoop, for a Tilliston carburetor. I have got a couple of spare parts and I found one this morning. Five pound. Atco Barrymore five pound spares or a bit. It was rough, but it had a electric start system and a Tilliston carburetor on it as well. And uh, I wanted to get that, but it turned out it was up near Pete Froud. So I don't know if Pete's going to pick it up or not, but it's got a, it's got a complete Tilliston carburetor on it. Let me find that nut and bolt that just fell on the deck down here somewhere. Because I should be needing that for later on, and no doubt it's gone for a burnt long. Oh, it is under, under, under my lift table. Don't know where it is. Just remember, guys, it's under my lift table. So now I can remove a carby, get a little bit of a crack. Here it goes, and then just tip carby up. That's actually ran the wrong way, that is, Mick. Just like that, and there's our carby. So nice and simple to remove a carby. How easy is that? Let's go over to the bench. We'll crack this carby open. Give a quick little blow off with an air compressor first and then uh, we'll go from there, see how we get on. So I'll see you guys once the carburetor is a bit cleaner, over on the bench, and we're going to clean it out. Okay, so carby on the old bench. Uh, as I say, this is, this is the Delorto, I'm sure it is the Delorto carb, Tecumseh's carb, yeah, it's all Tecumseh, so it's a genuine carburetor. To be fair, guys, I look, just looked at this machine, and it don't look like it's done an absolute massive oh, amount of work. And uh, I don't know if I can get that, even get that undone. It would be nice. I guess. Oh, there it goes. So I'm definitely put that on there. So it'd be interesting to see what sort of delights we have inside carb. Now I put some fuel in here yesterday. And we'll see what we get once we crank that off. That looks pretty good. It don't look too shocking. Yeah, it looks all right. Let's take the low ring off, get rid of that. Get a shot of that. Got the old float there as well. Take the pin out. There's a needle as well underneath there. All looks to be good. Do you know what? It doesn't look too bad at all. So why didn't want to run then, Mick, is the question. It looks pretty good. What I'm going to do, I'm going to remove these here as well because I think there's a flooding fuel screw assembly inside here. Generally, you find them more on the primers, okay? Um, but it could just want a very, very simple, quick carburetor clean. Maybe that, maybe that is all it needs. Just a quick, quick spruce up, quick tidy up, and it'll be golden. Maybe that's just what it needs, eh? Of which we can do that because we have the tools. So, quick little tidy up here. Get rid of some bits and bobs. Uh, don't get confused with a needle, Mick. Move all that away. So quick little tidy up. Get rid of all the old excess. Because we want to be as clean as we can when we do carburetor works. God, oh, that rain, man. That rain is absolutely torrential. We've had it there on the south coast here now for so long. It's beginning to look a bit like water weld. Right, so. 
Uh, quick little carburetor cleaner is going to be. So I'm going to go in through the main feed. In through there. I'm nearly out of WD-40 squirt and all. I might have to go and get some more. I don't go out. If I can help it. Right, quick squirt through there. There's a bit of dirt. Just come out. Just there. Yeah. There might have just been a little tiny bit of a plug going on. And I want to go down through the main tube in the centre here as well. Okay, so right down through the centre. Through the emulsion tube. Let that drain right through. All the way. Right, lovely. A little tiny hole down through here. Through this like Welch plug. Down in there as well. And I'm going to compress all this off. It's all going to be compressed. There's only one hole there, which is in the emulsion tube. It's generally where, where, where the issues lay. Um, I don't think there's any jets inside there. No, there's no jets inside there. Uh, I don't think it, it's actually got um, a, uh, a priming, a, 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 a flow assembly, a bit like what you see on the priming decumpty carbs on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove that little tiny air box because there will be like a, a Venturi in there for us to get into. So just gonna remove this one and then his little brother over here. And this will answer the question. I was a bit surprised every week because I saw Brucey do a decumpty car, but he was unaware of that little tiny screw. And I thought, well, if anyone would know about that, it'd be you, Brucey boy, but he didn't know. So it just goes to prove we're all, we're all being educated every time. So remove that out of the way. So look at this, this mower earlier on, I mean, the actual um, carburetor, uh, exhaust, that's really good. So look at the hole just up in here, see a little hole just down in there? And you can see that, just down in there, a little tiny hole, uh, just there, going to clean through there as well. I put the straw straight in, and I clean through, and that'll push through that welch. I'm nearly out of squirt. I'm struggling to get, get it all on all on show for you guys because I'm nearly out of squirt. I want to go and get some more today. And all I want to do is just blow an air for it. I'll blow some sauce for it. There it goes. That's better. Run it through. So that's that. So that to be fair, that's all there is in this carb. There's nothing else here. Okay, nothing else to see, ladies and gentlemen. So nice and simple. Only thing I've got to do, I'm gonna put that back on very, very quickly. I don't want to be losing any bits there. Oh, don't forget my little tiny gasket, Nick. Insulation block. Because normally you have a little tiny um, little tiny um, part of the priming system on this screw here, the one nearest to you when you fit the carb on, but this one doesn't have a priming system. This is a manual choker. Gasket, Mick. I'm trying to work with a camera right in front of me and I'm making a little bit of a pig's ear roll out of it, but I'm doing it so that you guys and girls get a bit of a better view. That's the idea. The closer the better, right? The same people say, oh, I didn't see that, I didn't see that. Well, I am trying, but I'm having to work around the side of the camera now. Just to please you guys. That screws into there. Has that got that gasket? No, it hasn't. Come on. Behave yourself, Mr. Gasket. I'll put that into there. Oh, that's bitten down now. So that's all there is to this little tiny car beat. What I'm going to be doing is just going to be cleaning out that main, the main fuel inlet with a, um, a Q-tip. You guys call them Q-tips, I think you call them in, in the USA. Um, over here we call them uh, ear syringing cleans, I think. It's not seating as well as I would like. That's going down now. Oh, okay. So squeeze that one down. Squeeze that one down. It's got to be tight, you see, otherwise it's just going to suck air. And that'd be no good to man or beast if it does that. Quite a big gap there. I might have to revisit that, but it looks okay. It's down. So all I'm going to do is get a Q-tip. I'm just going to clean the seat of that up. And you can put it on a drill if you want to. But as I say, this doesn't look too bad. I think there's a problem with the emulsion tube. A little bit of an ethanol up here. That's what I think it was. Let's go have a bit of a clean. And you can always tell when you get it because the, the end of your Q-tip's got a little tiny bit on the end of it. You see that little tiny bit there? That's when you can tell you've actually gone all the way down. And there's actually a little bit of dirt or something in there. You see it right down the bottom? I can see it from here. A little bit of something. Let me just try and hook that out. 
because there's a little tiny bit of something just sat in there. I can definitely see it 110%. And I'd like to fish that out, whatever that is. I'll need my um, dental equipment. I think is here. The dentistry, yeah, there you go. And I think there's a little tiny something right down the bottom. Just there. What is that? Don't know what that is. Could be a bit of damage. I might get a new a new seat for this. I can't quite see what that is. Weird. Don't know what that is. That's weird. It might be a mark. I'm going to have a quick little blast with WD-40 to get rid of any remnants in there. And I'll go back in again with a Q-tip. There's something just in the corner of that seat. I see it. The problem with these old Decumps carbs is they're getting hard to find parts. It's still there, whatever that is there. I can see it right down the bottom. But, we'll give that a go. So, um... Next thing to do is just to clean this up, which again uh, is your like your um, needle and uh, your your main jet for the bottom. But it looks to be quite good, so let's try and run it through. I want to see it come out the side of the holes. Uh, a bit of spray come up through. That'd be better. Mix. There you go. Yeah, it's running. That's running fine. Look at that. That's running absolutely beautiful. So that'd be compressed off. I'll put my float and my bowl back in, uh, put it all back together. The float looks to be okay. Sometimes these do deteriorate over time because they are like a brass, but it looks to be good. So you get your little tiny needle and you just hook it, hook it onto this little tiny bracket just here. Just hook him up. Just sit him on. God, it's so hard to look behind the camera. Like that. Hook him up like that. And then. Seat him in first, sit him down, and it's centralised when you when you get it sorted out. Get it centralised, and then put your pin back in. Like that. That's good. I'm going to pressure test my carb, make sure that's all working as it is, and have no problems. I'm going to put my O-ring back on, and um, all I then do is just literally just um, clean that, uh, compress that, um, that main jet out, and compress the rest of the carb out. Put it back together and I'll meet you over the other side of the shed and we've got to refit this back onto the mower. Okay, so um, I have now cleaned the tank out. There's a little tiny bit of leaf litter in there as well. So what I've done was just, just blew it through the end of the fuel line here, up through and just blew out best I can. Um, it looks to be 110% cleaner than what it was. There's a little tiny bit of leaf litter in there. Um, but you wanna make sure you're getting a decent fuel flow going down through. Uh, Carby now is done. Let me see how we go. So let's put that back on. Don't forget your little tiny governor arm. Hook him up. Fit him on upside down there. That goes on like that. That sits back. Now I would say this exhaust look, looks either to be brand spanking new or this machine has not done a lot of work. Is what I'm is what I'm surmising over. Normally the old exhaust looks a little bit cooked. But I don't know whether that's had a new exhaust put on it, or as I say, it's just not done a lot of work full stop. I don't think it's done a great deal. Because the fins don't look all cooked like they like, like should do for a 2003 model. Generally the people who have these machines anyway, they tend to take quite good care of these because they, you know, brand new, they, you know, they, they, they fetch a pretty penny. Well, especially with done in their day. But now, of course, Alec have got them. And, um, we'll go and see what Alec's are for prices, brand new. You know, they're not, they're, they're right, but uh, they're, they're not a cheap bit of kit. They're the right money, but people like me would never buy one brand new. Not all the time we've got some good second-hand ones out and about there. Um, so, carburetor is now linked up. Just got to nick it up with my 3.8 spanner, which is eluding me underneath the machine. There it is. Just got to nick this one up and just hold the back of a bolt just so make sure it's not spinning. And then you just have to just 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 butt these up tight. That's all you have to do. You don't got to hang on them. There 
this one. And this one's a bit a bit trickier because of the way in which a carburetor fuel inlet pipe sits. You can't really get a decent bite on it. Might make it right down here, maybe. Maybe, baby. I just don't want to damage a carb. So, this is a, uh, looks like a K3A um, carburetor. It's got a number on it of 514B K3A. So let's try and nick that. Oh, come on, baby. Give it me. Why don't you want to go on there? There you go, that's, better. that's a better bike there. Right, that's on. So now we can put the fuel hose on. Now that's not a very good fitting, that ain't. Let me get a fuel clamp for that, uh, to clamp that on, because that, that, that might be where it's coming out from. So let me go and get a fuel clamp, I'll be back to you in two ticks. Right, I'm a box of many bits. Got some little filters here, um, which you could fit on. I don't tend to run with filters on these, although it's already got one. It definitely wants a little tiny uh, fuel clamp and I do like to fit on these uh, shut-off valves because they do have a tendency just, just to weep. They all do, um, especially the older models. Um, so what I tend to do is, before I sell these, I always make, always make sure I put a fuel shut-off valve on them. I just say to the customer, if you find it's weeping a little tiny bit, because they do, and you can spend all year trying to, trying to fix that, just a, a quick little fuel shut-off valve. At the end of when you're mowing, when you finish mowing, Turn your fuel off, problem solved. Um, once they're running, they're not normally too bad. It's just when you leave in the shed for a week, that's when we tend to muck about on you. All right, fuel clamp in place. That's got a much better fit on there now. We're happy with that. Oh, I spare no expense here, mate. Yeah, spare no expense. Right, so fuel clamp on, quick slope your coffee. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so. Uh, air filter, what's that look like? Not too shabby. Got a bit of a blowout, that was pretty cool actually, quite like that. So quick little blowout on the old air compressor. That, was, that looks okay. I just, I just dropped it on the floor. I've got some new ones here somewhere. In fact, that is new. Look at that. I've got a conditioner back in there. That's new. That ain't very old at all. So let's put that on. And we'll fit that on, because sometimes these old decumpses, they don't like to run without an air filter on them. Or if you just make an air filter out of sponge, that actually restricts them, they hate, they hate that even more. They like a bit of air. Right. So, we've uh, now got, um, carburetor's been cleaned, we've got a brand new spark plug. We know we've got a spark, because we tested it, tested it the other day, didn't we? So let's put a little slurp of fuel in. I don't want to go too mad, because it might just decide like to crack a little leak on me. Let's just put a little bit in. I need that fuel to be fair and all. I'm running out of everything here. Yeah. Alright, fuel in. That should be enough for task. I'm just going to leave that and get my fuel clamps out just in case we do spring a bit of a leak. I can then shut the fuel off quite quick uh, if need be. So get my LED torch. Quick little look inside the tank to see how, see how much we've got in there. Uh, just over a quarter. So that'll be all right. I'm now just checking around the tank, around the carb. I've got a little bit of liquid there coming up, but that might be WD-40. So a quick little wipe off, all round. Just checking for leaks. And you'll definitely see a leak. If you've got a leak, you'll see it come down here. See it dropping down through here, okay? So at the moment, that's not leaking, which is good. But I hate to say, it will do it later when no one's looking. They tend to do that. So let me move that light out of the way, because we get a bit of light glare on there. I'm going to pull the mower out slightly, and then we'll go for a live fire up, shall we? No, not, and I'm not going outside. It's absolutely lashing cats and dogs. So I ain't doing that. That is not happening. Uh, I want a fuel cap. Now, the fuel cap on here has got no, no bit on it. See, so what I'm going to try and do, now I have said this before, if you use a Briggs and Stratton, Briggs and Stratton um, fuel caps, they're a good little fit. Now, someone said to me the other week, you tried it, and uh, I was lying. It didn't fit his, so you must have had a different style of tank on his. So the big question is, do I have 
a Briggs and Stratton classic fuel cap in my caps of many things. Let's have a look. Uh, Briggs and Stratton. They'll be everywhere, I guarantee you that. I'm sure that one there. What's that? That's a oh, that's to come. That's no good. Call me a liar. I ain't got one. But that one, that's got a gasket in it, see? Is that gasket? So we'll try that for now. But I do like to fit the, the, um, the Briggs and Stratton ones on there. Because they do just bite down a bit better. <laughs> I'm going to rob one off another Briggs and Stratton outside, but that just means I'm put letting water into a, into a tank or machine outside. I don't want to be doing that really. Let's put them back. These are all the bits and bobs I, I collect off of scrap machines, pull cords and you know, all that type of stuff. I'm just hovering trying to find a Briggs and Stratton cap, but it'll be outside. I ain't going outside. I'm not doing it. I'm just double checking the back of here, see what else we've got going on. No, there's not one here. But I tend to use the Briggs and Stratton ones, the classics. They're pretty good. So anyway, I'll put that one on there for now. It has got a gasket on there as well, which is good. Still no leaks. Let's bring that light back a touch as well. And I'll move you guys over a smidge. And then we'll go for a bit of a live fire up. Let's see what we get, shall us? Let's have a little look then. So let's bring you down here. So I'm looking for the machine to start up at least, just do something. And then hopefully it'll run. I don't know about the drive. I don't know what, what that's doing but we'll go from there. So let's put on to choke, allow the machine to choke. And it is a manual choke, so just, just give it a little, a little bit of time. I shouldn't need to flood the car because there should be fuel going down there. Um, bit of throttle, make sure that, is, that will turn off for me. Yeah, it will turn off, yeah, lovely. Put it on to throttle, give it a pull, and we'll see what happens, shall us? Let's see what happens. See if it'll start. Hello. So number one, uh, it runs, which is great, but I've got no drive. So let's just, just quickly investigate that. Now the person who had it before me, um, he cable tied a nice little Allen, Allen key bolt on it for me. So that's nice of him. I'll put that back on the machine for when uh, I go to sell it, but I've got no drive. So let's just investigate that. Now it will be, oh, I can use that. There will be, um, two belts in here and I'm hoping to see that just one of the belts has slipped that's what I'm hoping um, so quick little sneak peek bit of bonus footage here going on and this is one of the main reasons why I say to remove the front comb when scarifying because it does knacker the drives up if you don't remove that front comb um, what tends to happen is um, the drive is under so much stress because uh, that, that comb's digging into the ground. Let's have a look. Yep, belt's been slipped. Now that is an absolute prime example of the drive is under stress. And actually, we've got a bit, and I might not have a bit of damage, we'll see in a minute, but that belt has gone all the way right behind this, this pulley here and it might have bent that out. But we shall see if that goes back in a minute, it might do. So all I'm going to try and do is bring that belt back round, okay, just for now, without mucking about too much. Because um, I just, just want to sort of guarantee that it does actually work, and I don't need to look at that, because that looks a little bit suspect, but it, it might it might just pull out, because they do move a little tiny bit. So let me try and get hold of that belt, and I'll rearrange you, and I'll come back. Right, I've just rearranged you, so now 
yeah this is this is had quite a bit of a quite a bit of beef on this because it's it's been it's had the uh the belt on uh, the, the comb on while scarifying i see this quite a lot um in fact i had a repair not so long ago a bloke swore blind he didn't he actually had the uh had the belt off uh, had, had the comb off but then i asked him he asked me then how, how do i remove it later on so that sort of told me he didn't have it off but i didn't say nothing i didn't want to feel didn't want to feel bad let's just try and slip this belt it's right behind there I might have to zap it. It's right behind here somewhere, I can feel it. Here it is there, look. Right behind there. My word, my word, my word. Let's get a flat any driver. I'm just trying to sneak in now. There he is. Come on, Mr. Belt. It is a bit charred, so I will be replacing it. But just want to, it's just for purpose of exercise, that's all it is. That belt's got to come. Around to the other side of there, Mr. Pulley. On to there, yeah, that's a bit better. And then I'll try and slip that into his house. There, that's better. All right, now let's take that spark plug boot off. I don't want me trapping my fingers in here. In fact, turn to fire up. Ouch. Yeah, Mr. Belt is at it. Go, Mick. It might decide to go. Will it go, Mick or Mouse? It's had a right old wallop. God, it's right stuck in there too. There it goes. Right, it's on. So let's have a look at that. Unfortunately, it might have broken that, that pulley on there, which you'll see in a minute. See how much wobble is on it, but I think I might have done that in. It might decide to slip back. So I want a new wheel on here. And I've got spares for those, that's no drama, but it, do, it does look excessively worn now. So it might slip the belt again, but now I can fire it up. And I'll leave the side, co side cover off, and that way we can actually see if that's actually going to move, uh, move that belt or not, uh, move that drive. So let's fire it back up and see what it do. Uh, better throttle. It should start straight up with no with no choke. It might just chuck that belt straight off again. A bit of choke maybe. Oh no, HT lead. That's what it was. I took it off now. Right, now try the drive again. There you go, drive's working. Yeah, baby. Because it probably cut out because that, that belt is grabbing. Um, so it does want a new belt put on it. That's a hundred percent. And I need to just investigate uh, this here. Although that looks really loose, they're not, they're not designed to be solid, solid. But that looks a bit knackered than me. So that should sit a bit further down, a bit like that. So I might have to renew that arm there. But that's no big. I've got spares of those. Uh, new belt on there because that belt's completely burnt right out. All the rubber's down here out of the way I can see it is. But that's the main reason that these drives fail on here if you've got a scarifier. Because as I say, when you're in scarifying mode, um, this little tiny comb just down here, down here, that is digging in the ground. Once that's digging in the ground, it's really making your scarifier work really, really hard. So, um, I'm happy with it. We've done well, we've got a carburetor, carburetor cleaned. We've got it all up and running. Uh, the drive now works, but now I have just got to investigate the reason why um, that is the way that is, but I can sort that out. That's just, that's, it's just take that off, take that off, under the bolts, bish bash bosh, renew one of those. Yeah, that's a 10 minute job. And you can see he's had problems because his drive uh, is uh, been extended all the way. <clears throat> so he lost drive. And then he tried to extend it, tried to try to extend the uh, 
the belt. This is an adjuster here, and what you can do is, if your if your drive isn't working, you can just unscrew this one. The, the lower one is your drive, okay? Because if you activate your drive, you'll see this pulley move, right? That pulley there. If you activate your your cylinder, you'll see that pulley move. So this is your drive. So it's always a, the bottom one is, is is corresponding. And if you want to then just adjust your your drive, because you've got no drive, just unscrew. So just unscrew it, attach it, about two three turns. Then try it. If you don't get it, do a bit more, do a bit more. And that's taking the tension up on here, which is pulling this pulley over. And when you put a new belt on, okay, you have to screw that all the way back in, pretty much sort of three quarters way back in until this pulley becomes slack. All right, so just keep winding that in. Because there's not a lot of slack on these cables, Mickle Mouse. Okay, all right, now you see it start to slacken off just here. You'll see that pulley start, start to go off, okay? There it goes, it's moving now. Bit by bit by bit by bit by bit. Let's keep unscrewing it, and that, and that pulley go really really slack. Okay, it wants a good clean behind here, because but I think there's so much burnt rubber behind there. Uh, but that one's replacing, because that's knackered. But we can fix that. But all in all, I'm quite happy. Okay, so uh, just to finish the video off, I have um, did find a leak uh, just here. It's just weeping, so I have now put a new bit of fuel pipe on with a fuel tap as well, with clamps on as well. So that's all good. Uh, much better, but I have got to do quite a bit of work on here because there is quite a bit of damage um, here. Some of this is broken. I did a bit more investigating that there's a pin should be here, a bolt that, that's damaged. Got to change that over, a few pulleys, a few belts, whatever. So I've got to do a bit more work yet, but hopefully the machine should be up and running. The electric drive at the moment doesn't, doesn't work, but I don't know if that's the battery's knackered or the start has gone or whatever. I haven't figured that bit out yet. But I want to take all this cowling off, have a good clean up, sort out and then I'll come back another day once I put it all back together again uh, unless you want to see me take the cowling off if you want to see me take all the cowling off have it tied up let me know in the video and if not I'll, uh, I'll take it off the bench I've got something else to work on for today so if you like this little episode of Mixed Mars and Man, hit the subscribe button whack the old bell set notifications to all that way you'll be told next time I upload another video and I look forward to seeing this episode of Mixed Mars very very soon but until then guys and girls much more importantly take care easy